Oh, thanks very much, Andy. <clears throat> Hi, everybody. Um, as Andy said, um, my name is Leslie Evans. I'm currently the section leader for quality control based at the QA lab at the Welsh Blood Service. Uh, thanks very much for um, inviting me to speak and share our experiences as users of Hariba technology. My aim today is to give you a, um, a bit of an overview. It's less technical than everybody else's presentation, but hopefully it'll give you a, a nice little insight into how we use um, the ABX um, technology where we are and how the, the technology is used to support the Welsh Blood Service to supply blood products to hospitals in Wales. So next slide, please. Um, so as I said, in the session, we'll cover a few introductions just to give you an idea of who we are, who I am and what I do within, within the lab. Um, the relationship that we have, the Welsh Blood Service has, in particular the QA lab um, with Hariba themselves. Uh, we'll cover areas such as what devices we have and how we use them and why. And then I'll look at how the devices support the Welsh Blood Service to provide the products to patients in Wales and beyond and finish with some of the benefits that Hariba Systems has presented before us and with some of the latest developments within our department. Next slide, please. Um, so the Welsh Blood Service collect voluntary non-renumerated blood donations from the general public in Wales. The main centre is based here at Tower Green, Clantra Centre in South Wales, which is approximately 13 miles west of Cardiff. Um, up until 2016, the service collected donations from donors and supplied blood and blood products to patients from South, East, West Wales, up as far as Mid Wales. However, in 2016, we evolved into the All Wales Blood Service, and now we collect from and supply to the whole of Wales. This was a 25% increase in business for us and included the introduction of a specialised transport service to courier blood back and forth from our main site in South Wales up to our stockholding unit up in Wrexham. So these donations then are processed down in South Wales and tested before distribution to hospitals where they support patient care. We also hold blood derived products, both NHS and commercial, for purchase by our customer hospitals, of which there are 19 at the moment throughout North and South Wales. The WBS is a division of the Belinda University NHS Trust, and the Welsh Government has oversight to us. We are a UK, UCAS accredited medical laboratory, and the WBS is authorised and licensed by the MHRA, who regularly audit us. Next slide, please. So as I said, my name is Leslie, and I'm currently working as the quality control section leader in QA Lab at the WBS. I started work here in 2002 as a trainee biomed. Um, so this is actually my 20th year at Welsh Blood. Um, I qualified in 2003 as a registered biomedical scientist, and in 2007 obtained a master's. Um, and, there, and from there, I continued to develop my experience in QA in particular. And in 2019, became part of the leadership team in my current role. Um, so this is my role is foremost a leadership role um, that supports the day-to-day -day operational management of the QA lab um, with a particular focus on quality control testing, data analysis, um, reporting functions, uh, as well as environmental monitoring. So what, who are the QA lab? What, we do, what do we do? So the QA lab at the Welsh Blood is considered to be a support service to the manufacturing and testing laboratories. So our role is to ensure that all blood products manufactured and distributed meet the specifications outlined in the guidelines for blood transfusion services in the UK, which is affectionately known in our business as the Red Book Guidelines. So on a daily basis, the manufacturing team randomly select a number of red blood cell units, platelet units and plasma products from a variety of processes ready for quality control testing. So sampling plans are well established and we use SPC methods to determine the quantity of testing numbers. We use a variety of systems in the lab, as Andy uh, has already mentioned, um, to obtain the relevant data as required by the guidelines, including flow cytometers, spectrophotometers, we've got a COAG um, system and obviously the Hariba ABX hematology analyzers. We are quite different from hospitals in terms of how and uh, how and what samples we deal with and um, all the samples that we deal with are particularly from healthy obviously healthy donors um, and mainly component samples. 
So this is um, this is our lovely little hematology bench. Um, as you can see, it's not the, particularly the largest hematology testing area that exists, but it is it's particularly um, designed for us and is fit for purpose. Um, we're currently using the Hariba ABX Pentra XL80 analyzer, and that's supported by the Multilink Data Manager system for all our hematology testing. So the Multilink is interfaced with our blood computer, blood establishment computer system, ePRGESA, which allows us to transfer our results um, of our samples to the electronic, electronic donor records um, for traceability of every do donation that's, um, that's made. We, we've been a customer now of Hariba since 2011, and this is actually our second XL80 system that we have installed. Um, we selected this initially, this system, particularly because of its suitability to the estimated sample throughput um, and for its particular user-friendly interface. So what are we testing? So we aim to, um, we test, sorry, um, two main types of full blood count samples in the QA lab. FBC samples that are taken as part of donor care for apheresis platelet donors and failed screen test or FST samples that are generated when a donor fails the hemoglobin screening check at donation. So on average, we test approximately 70 to 80 apheresis FBC samples per week along with 60 to 70 FSTs, which is obviously a lot less than most hospitals would be putting through. However, our main sample throughput is uh, blood component samples, and these samples are taken from the randomly selected units from each day of manufacture and consist of concentrated red cells, concentrated platelet samples, and plasma samples. Um, and these samples are tested in CBC mode, mainly due to the products being leukodepleted. depleted. So there's no white cells, there shouldn't be any white cells left in them. Um, and on a daily basis, we're testing uh, approximately 50 concentrated red cells and then between 20 to 30 concentrated platelet samples every day. So this slide is just to give you an idea in terms of, um, num uh, in terms of uh, results really that we can uh, expect every day. So due to the unique nature of these samples, it, it was important for us to procure a system that would be able to provide accurate data at the extremities of the parameters whilst maintaining an acceptable limit of quantitation. Um, and this is what we found the ABX XL80 does really well for us. Um, so as an example, you've got the, our concentrated red blood cell components. So we can, we can see um, hemoglobins ranging from, from about 140 to 240 grams per litre. Um, for uh, with an average of about 200 for most samples and hematocrits of anything between 0.2 and 0.7 uh, and then platelet count, platelet concentrate, um, we can expect platelet counts for of around roughly about 1200 times 10 to 9 per litre um, but this can sometimes increase if we've got um, a, what's called a hyperconcentrated platelet units uh, which are a specialised product that would be requested uh, by clinicians and this can reach up to anything up above 2,500 um, times 10 to the 9 per litre. Um, we also look at platelet samples using the analyzer and actually because of the nature of the platelet samples, we are checking for um, cellular contaminants, which would be mainly things like red cells and, and platelets. Um, and due to the nature of the process, we would expect very, very extreme low numbers down obviously as far as zero then for these products. So the data generated by the ABX is transferred to data sets by our staff that holds a wide range of information about each unit that's tested. And on a weekly basis, the data is analyzed in line with our SPC rules. And this provides us with a week by week picture of our manufacturing processes overall. So we're able to establish whether certain processes are in or out of control. Um, and this is key obviously for us, for our manufacturing um, site. This type of analysis allows us to react quickly to trends that may be evident and the results from the ABX is obviously key to this, um, this whole process. Um, each month a wider quality monitoring report, which is the sort of dashboard that I've included there on the slide, is produced, um, which is presented then to the organisation by our senior staff 
through regulatory groups as an overview of the status of the manufacturing process. Um, the report highlights the compliance of each component type to the specifications outlined in the Red Book guidelines. Um, and the data is also discussed in finer detail then between ourselves and the manufacturing team in, in our uh, monthly data review group meetings. So this allows us then to explain the data pattern we're observing and whether any intervention is required by the manufacturing team or obviously us as QA laboratory. And we found over the years that this collaboration is extremely valuable to the service. Um, exceptions to the process are investigated either by our lab or by the manufacturing team with our support. Um, and this may mean that testing numbers then need to increase or that samples may need repeat testing using the ABX and some of our other systems. Um, successful compliance then overall means that we are safe to release units to the blood supply chain to be dispatched to our customer hospitals, which in turn then obviously treat our patients in Wales. So just to finish, in terms of benefits, so over the years as Hariba customers, we've uh, realised a number of benefits. Um, we found that the simple to use, easy to navigate interfaces of the ABX Pender XL80 is particularly of use to us. It allows us um, to customise access settings, which has allowed us to then um, train support grade staff to confidently operate the system on a daily basis. So scientific staff are used in the department to oversee workflow and perform the, the data analysis tasks. But due to the versatility of the system, we've been able to train our support grades to perform um, startups, QC, run samples, they change reagents, they're able to perform the routine maintenance, um, cleaning activities, etc. Um, and this is valuable to us because it means that we're able to free our registered scientific staff then to obviously concentrate on the, the important analytics of the system. Um, we've also been able to build a great working relationship with our local um, engineer, Yannick. Um, hopefully he doesn't mind me uh, mentioning, mentioning his name. Um, um, and we know that we're able to seek advice and guidance from him at any time when we're experiencing any issues. Um, I'd probably say that when he's around in the, in the lab, he kind of feels part of the team. So he's very comfortable in the lab and our staff are particularly comfortable with him, which is really, um, which is a, a value to us, obviously. Um, and then in terms of development, so in, term, uh, in 2019, as part of a service improvement project, we actually went ahead and purchased a new point of care system, um, the Pentra 60C+, which is, um, for those who are not familiar, it's, it's basically the same system as the XL80 without the ability to run uh, multiple samples using the rack system. So this is essentially a single test um, system um, and this is used in our in our on-site donation clinic at the centre. Um, this is this new system was validated and implemented in June of 2020 um, and it is used to support the apheresis platelet collection process by providing a point of care test result for blood, full blood count samples taken from donors um, prior to donating platelets. Um, and this development has provided us with a number of benefits. So for the organisation, it means we now have a robust contingency system that we can use in the event of any failure of our main analyzer in the laboratory. It's also allowed us to maximise the platelet yield of donations by providing up to the minute results that can be input into the collection machines. It has provided our donors with a positive experience, so they're able to sit um, in the donation clinic and at every point they're able to see what's happening with their samples, with their donation. Um, and you can just see in that, in that top photo there, there's, um, we've got a donor sitting um, reclining on the bed and the analyzer is literally just in the background there. So everything is pretty much in view of the donor. Um, and this we found, we've had feedback from donors and said that this is really sort of um, made for a different experience for them and it's really encouraging to see. Um, the collection staff also as well, so the collection staff that are working within that department, they're not, um, they're not uh, obviously scientific staff, they're, they're new, generally um, nurses and collection staff, um, but having the system in the actual area where they are collecting the donations 
has allowed them the opportunity to gain new skill sets um, and we've, a, we've been able to train them as the, the main operators of this system, which is um, some people have enjoyed, some not so much, but um, they've all embraced it in fairness to them. They've all embraced it really well and it's, um, it's, it's taken off really well. Um, and more recently, we have just installed and validated, well, back last year, um, a replacement um, X80 in the actual QE laboratory. And that was done on part, as part of the routine capital replacement um, of equipment that we have in the service. Um, the benefits of sticking with Hariba for this was obviously, you know, it's the same system. It's total familiarity. Um, there was no training overhead with this system, so all the all the staff were already familiar with how to use the system, how to operate it, what to expect from it, um, and all that. We were able to keep all our original procedures, um, you know, do, doing general reviews and things. But um, in general terms, it was um, a, literally a switch out like for like system. Um, some good validation with good results, um, and yeah, it's worked really well. Um, thank you very much. That's that's it from me. Any questions? Thank you very much, Lisa. Yes, there are some questions. Oh you gosh. <laughs> okay. Uh, so uh, the first one is: What are the usual QC acceptance criteria in terms of hemoglobin and hematocrit for red cell concentrate? Um, well, we use the external controls, obviously, from Hariba. So what, whichever tar what the target ranges that are set in for those are generally we use a we use a high, a low and a, um, and a normal range control that's used on a daily basis. So we start the, the, the we QC the machine up in the mornings um, and then we, um, we we test the QCs throughout the day. In, yeah. terms, of, in terms of the actual um, the specifications, for what was it red blood cells you said or hemoglobins uh, for red cell red cell concentrates yeah i think it's the limits for the hemoglobin hematocrit for red cell concentrates so we've got so um specifications are um the specifications in the red blood in the red book are sort of defined with with um peer groups and the there's we have some we've run some tests ourselves and what we what we develop is there's a lower limit in terms of criteria and then um and then there's local um almost what we call what we what we call them as discard limits so that at, at um at the moment there's no upper limit in terms of hemoglobin levels but we have a lower limit of 30 grams per liter for each unit um, and obviously our calculations, whatever we're getting off the ABX, we, we would input that into our data set and that would give us per unit of blood that we would supply where we have a limit then of the of 30 grams per, per pack then of of, um, of red cells. Okay, and, and as, regard, as regards plasma products, mm. uh, presumably you check for the absence of red cells and platelets. Uh, yeah. what, again, what's the criteria for that, please? i.e. what's the limit, acceptable limit? So there's um in terms of the in terms of red in terms of red cells, there's 30, I think it's 30 grams per litre or no, it's not 30 grams per litre. Can you just two seconds? Um if I if I get my because I don't want to be giving people the wrong um the wrong information. That's fine. And then I'll get you that fairly quickly. My Right. I'm sure I've seen a sheet that was on the near the analog yeah. with all the limits. It's all yeah, it's on there, and I can pull that to the X. So we've got so so in terms of red cells, it's so for each. So yeah, so for red cell count in 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 plasma units. It has to be less than six times ten to the nine per litre, and that's in pre-freeze. So that's before we freeze down the project. So it's yeah. it's less than six. It's platelet count. I was thinking of thirty. It, platelet in terms of platelet contaminant, we're allowed um, no more than thirty um, times ten to the litre. Okay, that's great. Let me see if we've got any more questions. Uh, on average, how many tests? Per day, do you run through the 60? 
through the 60 at the moment that's in kind of development so in uh, on the 60 it's it's really low at the moment and that's based on the fact that that we when they when we input the the analyzing into that um area um they already had a method whereby our department so us in the qa laboratory were responsible for testing the full blood counts that were um coming out of that um area what we are working with them to do now is to develop a program where we don't we don't just test um what we call what we what we know um as being same day count so samples that are bled for each donor before they donate um on the day so um the program that they need to put in place now is to get them to do that on a daily basis so at the moment they run in probably around five i would say as a maximum five samples a day but with this new program in place when they do some validation they will be running anything between something like 10 and 20 to 10 30 um fbc samples um and it will vary on the days on the collection days just because they collect at different levels on each day throughout the week uh, and uh, it's uh, minimal yeah, at the moment patient. it's really minimal I, I i i guess the fact that the 60 is right next to the patient means to get that instant result as well there's no waiting it's there yeah the yeah gets blessed, the result is there um yeah as regards uh platelet concentrates um mm -hmm. Have you ever been asked to provide some sort of assessment of functionality of platelets rather than just a platelet count? Not, not specifically from um, as a from QA point of view. So from quality monitoring, it's not it's not a criteria that we need to provide that information. We have um, we do have a research and development department. Well, we had research and development within our system within our department, which has now been extended and sort of moved out slightly of us um to be its own um entity really so we now have a component development and research department um and i know they look at um other aspects of of platelet um activity and things and that's part that would be that would be part of any sort of research project that they would do but on a you know for us in terms of the information that we provide we, we there's no um there's no expectation that we would do that as you know as a qa function yeah it, f final question if i may if you had a mm. wish list mm. what would you like to see on a hariba system that would help you in your daily workload um i think we're obviously not promising we can do it no i know i know um and it, this is only because i think uh, you know um i haven't looked into it in a great deal in my in uh, at the moment but um i am aware that uh, the are uh, Hematology systems analyzers that are out there, and whether they're CE marked is another thing, but um, that could potentially give us the sensitivity of our what we would be getting from our flow cytometry. So for us, with our samples that we test um, and with the with the donations that we collect, they have to be, as I said, leukocyte depleted, so all white cells removed um, during processing, and as part of the um, as part of our criteria, we have to provide um, we have to provide data on how many, obviously, how much white cells are or residual white cells would be left in our products. And in order for us to do that, to the levels, the low levels and the sensitive levels that we require, we actually need to use flow cytometry. So we don't, you know, we we take our samples, we we test them using the ABX. Um, for all the, the red cell parameters and platelet parameters. But in terms of white cell counting, at the extreme low levels that we are looking at, we need flow cytometry. And if we could amalgamate that, um, you know, that level of sensitivity yeah. then flow cytometry can give us into that one system, that would probably completely overhaul our our whole testing and you know our workflow for the for the days really. Um, because that part of that element of testing takes up the majority of our day, um, and it's quite a you know it's a heavy it's a heavy um, it's a heavy testing um, overhead really to have. Um, it's you know it's been there since I've been there, but it's it's something that I know that technology potentially is existing. But yeah. like I said, we we have some um, 
we need to you know satisfy um, regulators by having things like CE marketing and stuff. So um, yeah, I think that would be if we could bring those things together, that would be great. <laughs> So, so bring the lower level of quantitation down then to a yeah yeah an even lower level than it already is okay, yeah we, even though yeah lower than it is now we, we can't promise anything but we'll see what we can do mm -hmm. right, that's great thank you very much Leslie thank you for your no time and effort that was a very good presentation thank you very much.